Belizean legends and I'm Bilal Morris. Today we will be speaking with Johnny Lindo, a legendary Belizean athlete. An athlete of multi-talented aspects because Johnny Lindo here, who has visited with us, been at this long overdue because quite a few years I have met him and asked him to come on in and speak about Belizean sports history. And Johnny Lindo here played a, a series of sports. He played, he was also a jockey in the legendary times of those Belizean uh, horse racing greatness. He also played football during those great Belizean football era of the 1970s, where those see those dynamic teams like White Label, where Belize, I think, had its best ever in terms of football. Some of the best Belizean football ballers came out of the time of Johnny Lindo's time, the 1970s, though he goes back a little further than that also in terms of the other sports. But Johnny Lindo also played tennis. And today we will be hearing a lot about his tennis career and bringing forth to you the history of that whole tennis era, which was also a very explosive sports time in Belize, where we saw legendary players like Billy, like Billy Musa and um, Sonny Main. And but most of all, Johnny Lindo also surprisingly, I didn't even know that the man had a kind of a yoga style. He was he also did yoga, and in Belize had a gymnastics uh, sport. Uh, arena, Johnny Lindo would have probably been on that also with the great Orlando Pelayo and all these dynamic Belizeans who were doing gym, uh, who was doing um, yoga at the time, right? And yoga and gymnastics, they fit into that same category. My brother, you see, you wear so many hats. And without any further ado, I want to welcome you to Belizean Legends, man. Thanks, and sir. thank you so much for being here today. Um, I want to go straight into it, Johnny Lindo. I mean, for a lot of Belizeans, they see you up here, they said, oh, there needs no introduction. Because that man there, we know that brother right there, because he, he transcends so many different aspects of Belizean sports. But start by telling us about your sporting career and how you actually started out in sports and all these sports that you played. Um, actually, I'm from a horse racing family, Canton and Lindo. Yes, so, great. You know, we could say that I'm part horse today. <laughs> but uh, my riding career actually starting out with this picture yeah, she, yeah. when I was a kid. Put it out in front of the camera, you know. There you go. This is where yeah. we started out because I always yeah. loved horses. Yes, man. Uh, from there, wow. I, st I started attending <laughs> the races. And um, nothing fascinates a young kid, a boy, as much as horses, believe me. And. Um, that was one of my fascinations, man. I just okay. love to see horses, boy. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I was always around the racetrack. I started out, um, you know, picking stables, mucking, walking, doing whatever you do when you first started to learn the game, you know? Yes. And um, I was lucky to have a friend by the name of Albert Catus. I would refer to him as my mentor because we used to gallop horses together and he would be giving me tips and talking to me. And when race day would come around, he would talk to the owners of lesser quality horses and convince them to make me ride the horses so I could get experience. Yes. And that's how I made my way up the ladder. So thank you very much, Albert Catus, for yes, that. Yes. <laughs> that's what they used to call Poppy, right? Poppy, right. He yes, lived in Barry by the car. Yeah, man. He used yeah, to remember Poppy. Was Poppy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, was a, he was a great rider, man. You know. Big up yourself, Poppy. You know where, he, where he's at? In New York? No, he's in Belize. He's in he's Belize. Big home. up yourself, my yeah. friend. If you see this on Crypt Television, yeah. you know. Yeah, Johnny Lindo calling you out. <laughs> <laughs> um, somebody uh, I mentioned on Facebook recently, they asked about this guy, Jimmy Horse who was also a jockey and he disappeared off the scene for a long time. Well, I happened to have a picture of him when he was young and riding for my grandfather. This is him here riding uh, with Misty. Who was yes. a, Misty was a legend, one of the fastest, fastest horses we had. Yes, man, and time. Our viewers will be able to see this more clearly because I'm going to insert these photographs in Johnny Lindo's documentary feature right after this and when the editing goes on so we'll be able to see these photographs more clearly yes here is a picture of um, Ben Shanta which was owned by Freddie Hunter the Minister of Agriculture this is a picture of a young me along with Neil Bradley after yeah. the race yes 
Ben Shanta. <laughs> yes, sir. Ben Shanta. These horses you rode, brother. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yes, man. Um, this one is a picture of me on Misty. Yes. This was a day that we took um, two big races in the same day. Thanks to my cousin, Mr. Gilbert Canton, the t second. He was the one who um, gave me my first start in riding big races. Yes, sir. And I never disappointed him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the legendary Johnny Linda right here, huh? This is your Misty. Misty, This right. is the great horse that, that the great Richard Char Ramirez talk about and as well as QQ Leslie. They talk about this great horse called Misty. This picture is a... Uh, everybody was discussing who was the fastest horse in Belize. And uh, they had this special $1,000 race to see who was going to be the winner. And this is, uh, this is myself and Misty here winning the race. Behind me is Teal, owned by Freddy Hunter and ridden by Elias Galvez. And in third place is Welcome Sir. Wow. From Orange Walk, ridden by Bobby Stevens. Bobby Stevens. Yeah. Yes. These two pictures right here, uh, a picture of Misty Morn. This filly is actually a granddaughter of Misty. And um, this was a homebred by my father. She ran eight races. And we had to um, retire her because there was just no competition for her. Yeah. So this is me galloping her, you know, in exercise. And this is her regular rider before a race with my younger brother, Mark. Yes. Well, you had a younger brother that also rode. No, no, no. He, this That's is your here. younger brother yeah. there as yeah. a trainer there. Yeah. Yeah, standing next and to the This filly was her. trained by um, Alfred Taylor. You all know him as um, Beryl or Haas Yes, Papa. Beryl. Yeah, Beryl. This was his filly. <laughs> Yeah. Undefeated. Undefeated, yeah. Um, at this time, I would like to dedicate this horse racing part of the show to Beryl. He was the only Belizean horse whisperer that we ever had. Look at that. This guy could get inside a horse's head. Yeah. His horses were always full of dynamite and are always winners. He, made, he concocted medicines that baffled the vets. Wow. He cured he cured um, ailments and horses that the vets couldn't cure. Man. So Beryl, a big you up right here, brother. The legendary Beryl. Yeah. Big time name that, John Linda. Yeah. We always <laughs> hear about the branch right yeah. there. But you actually opened it up there to let yeah. us see who this who this brother was, you know, in terms of horse yeah. medicine and so on. These two pictures that I have right here, that's a horse called Firestone that was owned by Norman House. This horse was bred by my dad and um, I took over the training of him for Mr. House and we ended up defeating an imported thoroughbred by the name of Baby Pat three times in a row. Wow. To gain the title of Best Miler. Best Miler. Yeah. Serious history there. This here is a, fa a picture of my dad, Jimmy Lindo. Yeah. They had a um, they had an owners race at National Stadium, which the owners actually did the riding. So this is a picture of him, and this is the legendary Ray Catus beside him holding the horse. Yes, another man. great horseman. Yes, Mr. Ray Catus. Very, very big yeah. time name in horse racing. Yeah. Canton Catus. You know, yeah. uh, we hear Richard Ramirez, and now you, Johnny <laughs> Lindo, call all these great people who, if it was not for them. There would not have been no horse racing. Exactly. Lindo Catus, Canton. Yeah. You know, and the name goes on. Ramirez. Yeah. You know, the big names in Belizean horse racing. We had Cantons, we had the Massons, Castillo, Lightburn, August, the Isles, we had Bedran, Galvez, Hunter, yes. Mazaya, Tillit, and Brong. These are all great horse owners. Yes, man, that made Belize's legendary horse racing period in the 1960s and 70s, exactly. right, Johnny Lindo? Man. This here is a picture of my son, Jervan. He rode his first race when he was nine years old. Wow. In double head cabbage and Why won. chip off the whole block? And he won. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that, Johnny Lindo. You had yeah. a son that also yeah. picked up your... My only son. Wow. And he started out early just like myself. Here we go. Look at that. <laughs> 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 he's, 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 he's not coming up in here with some gems. <laughs> he's blowing up the place. <laughs> Man. This one here is a picture of my mother, Olga Canton, in Stan Creek. This is from the 1940s. 
She was also a jockey when she was a young girl in, in Stan Creek. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Is that, man. And these are a couple of pictures of her and my dad on the farm. You had a whole... We were used to breed the horses in Punta Gorda. You had a whole family, a whole... It was a, it was yeah. a family dynasty, horse racing yeah. dynasty you had yeah. there. You know, parents as well as children involved with horse racing. Passed down from one generation to the other. This one is a picture of the legendary Tamu Shanter. One of the greatest sires that we had owned by the Cantons. Yes. This is a very rare picture because there are not a lot of pictures of him available. Wow. Awesome, yeah. man. Awesome. Man, you went straight to the photos, man. Yeah. And you have photos, John Lindo. You have an archive that is so very exciting. Finally, this is a thoroughbred stud orbit that my dad imported from Jamaica. This is a picture of him here breaking the mile and eight record in Jamaica at Caymanas Park. So, so Belize went to Jamaica yeah, and made artists. it big. Yeah, this is another picture of him after the oh. race, Urbit. The mighty Urbit. You know, with Ramirez and Q, you bring a whole new chapter, you know, because I've never heard about these horses yeah. that you are talking about here. I also never heard about these other, this other chapter of horse racing that you are bringing here, that there was a horse that actually went to Jamaica and won. No, actually, this is before we bought him. That's before you this, bought that's him. That's when he was in that's Jamaica. That's when he was in Jamaica. Won. And then we and bought then him you after. bring him in. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And this, and he, he, did he make big waves in Belize? Oh when yeah. He, uh, he, uh, he had like 90% winners of all his, his offspring. Wow. Yeah, that's it was a great sire. Man. Urban. Talk about Jamaica and what Jamaica, because Richard Ramirez also talk about, Charles talks about his father also importing horses. See what Jamaica happened is like um, it had some great horses. Because of the, the British influence, yes. they had a lot of imported yes. thoroughbreds. You know, and um, if you if you look at the, if you if someone who know bloodlines mm -hmm. and trace the bloodlines, you can go back and see where they really really imported good horses from England. Wow. wow. Um, this is an example. So those horses were coming out of England. That was going yeah, to yeah. The British was there. bringing them in. They are imported there, and you then know, you know they you know, they, they keep the breeding up yeah, right there. Yeah, the, 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 the bloodline. The bloodline, blood right? Yes, sir. This is an example of a uh, pedigree. This is Urbit, and you can see his father was Zalukos, his mother was Telstar. Mm -hmm. the, grand, uh, the grandparents right there is Aratostra and Marazinid, and his great grandparents. Wow. And what you do, you trace back these and see how each horse performed in the track. What was their traits? Was there a sprinter where they could they go long? And that's how you put horses together to try to get the best. Yes. Wow, well, you know, you, did you were you the one that break this down like this? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I used, right. I used to do all the, the books and the charts you of my know, dad, the breeding, in, when know, we were in Punta Gorda. Yeah, you know the history and you know the science yeah. of the sport itself yeah. in terms of the the whole lineage of how the horses right, exactly. came down through the bloodlines and so on. Awesome, right here, believe we've never had this before. Look at this. Now this is what we call writing a whole chapter. A whole history of Belize's horse racing, right here. This is very important. Um, yeah, man. I would like to mention at this time that I just had communication with um, James Masson, who now lives in Florida. He was Mr. They also had great um, sires in Belize at their farm. Well, James informed me that he owns four two-year-old thoroughbreds in Florida that are training, oh, wow. and they're they're all grass horses. They wow. got to run at the turf. Wow. So these are, this is recent? Yeah, this is recent, like two weeks so ago. So let's I... talk about recently, John Lindo, because you come from a great horse racing period when it was at its best. Exactly. You know, it was at its pinnacle. Now you're talking about how do you think horse racing has continued now that it's in Orange Walk? It has moved from Belize City to Orange Walk. Is it as outstanding as it was? Because now you're talking about recent things like they are trying to keep the sport going. Yeah. But... Talk about how you think that it is now compared to then, when you were riding at the time. The thing, the thing, the difference that I see now is that um, we don't have the passion like the past owners and the horse people had before. 
you know, it's more like just a sporting event for the DNO. Yeah. In true. the past, yeah, people it, say I'm going to read Walker yeah, House Racing. We were really dedicated yeah. back then. Yeah. You know, yeah. we, we put in everything that we had into into it. You know right, what I mean? Right, it wasn't right. just just for show. Yeah, it's just an entertainment you know, thing. Though it looks like it appears. Yeah. The owners, you know, they put their money in. They, mm -hmm. you know, they did everything they could at yes, the time. Yes. Um, racing in Belize City, back in the back in the days. We had a lot of help also from Mr. Albert Catus, who was a minister at the time and a horse owner. Yes, yes. So we could always get help from public works to maintain the yeah, track, track and stuff like that that was important. Right. You know, because right. horse racing in Belize is just a sport. It's not a money thing. There's no yeah. money to be made. Yes. You know what I mean? And that's the part that I wanted to talk about too in terms of the passion that you talk about that went into then compared to now. You, I, I, you're the third jockey that comes up here in Belize and Legends, and I've asked all two before you, were you all getting paid for that stuff, man? And the brother said, man. Your lives were on the line. Those horses could have killed you, man. You know? Man, the most, the most money I ever, I ever made for winning a big race was like sixty dollars, man. Yeah, you know? Exactly. At that time, you know, it was big time money for yeah, for your yeah, money. Yeah, of right? course, of course. What I used to do was, um, during high school. I got up at 4 o'clock every morning yeah. and went to the track, gallop horses, take care of the ones I have to, jump on my bike, get back home, bed, and then make it to school for 8 o'clock. Man, that's a pattern because you, you know? talk to the softballers and all of them had that kind of thing. Yeah, when man. I come for school or I come for work and I'm going home and I have to get right back and we did all of that yeah, man. and we, we were we excellent. Did. And it yeah. was and it was because of the love of the sport. The sport man. You know what I mean? Yes, because yes. nowadays I see people making easy money. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. man, where were this money when I was around? But man? even the athletes, John yeah. though, yeah. that the athletes are not they don't look at their sport in discipline with that kind of exactly. passion exactly. that they you don't. all used to look they at don't. the sport, right? And I guess that's why you all excelled so well exactly. comparatively. And I'm not saying that you don't have a lot of them today. Oh yeah, you know, with a lot of young athletes in Belize there, they you could see the passion. Yeah. But you know, not the way how you know, exactly put inside and, you of the know, sport. It, they could it could be distractions from um, having too much stuff available now. Right. In right. my day you went to a party, the, the, or you the, went to less was better, no? Yeah, right. You went to the theater, and that was it. Yeah, you less know, was, was better. Less was better. So they're right? more, you know? more the spy lane. Exactly. They, they exactly. are not like you know. They got too much to on their hands. Exactly. We would have thought that would have made them better than yeah. Us right. In those right. Days. Right. But no, like you're saying, you know, scarcity yeah, was so. I remember back in the day we were playing our football game, and the ball get kicked over the fence, a crazy horse or somewhere. And the game shop, the ball just go off a corner and your mobile is available, you know what I mean? So yeah, that, 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 that's a good point for us to, <laughs> to, to transition right into football. Yeah. This is Belize and Legends. I'm Bilal Morris. We are speaking with the legendary Johnny Lindo, multi-talented Belizean athlete coming to you here live right here in Belize and Legends. Jockey, footballer, tennis player, and also a yoga artist. A yoga athlete that did tremendous yoga. Self-taught, you know, not like Orlando Pelaya, even he got out of school. This man you learn anything on his own. And this is what made Belizean sports was so great in that we were not going to no academy, bro. We didn't have no schools of sports, bro. Exactly. You know what I mean? I mean, and then we were excelling at the time. You know, John Lindo? The other thing was, um, I think we had more discipline. Yeah. Because the same day that I bought my first yoga book, I stopped smoking cigarettes and I never drank soft drinks again. That was 1974. Yeah, consciousness, right? Immediately right. came. So like I you. said, man, you have to have the discipline. Yeah, the discipline. I guess that's why you were such a talented, you know? multi-talented athlete. Talk about your football career, brother, because well, you were. I saw some pictures there where you were standing with some dynamic greats yeah. of Belizean football. I had well, I I was lucky to play with and against. Real Hall of Fame Belizean footballers, yes, you know, yes, so yes. which which helped my game mm -hmm. a whole lot, right, right, you know? right, and made me want to get better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the, the, yes, yeah yes. Um, actually, um, I started out in Stan Creek as a little kid because my mother was in the states and they sent me down here to live with my grandmother. You know, yeah, yeah. so guys like Orino Rio, Garincha Adderley, James Adderley, and all these guys were like. My childhood companion that we played, we started playing ball yeah. together on the field in Stan Creek. Yes. And um, I came up to Belize City, J 
just before Hurricane Hattie, like a year before. Yes. And I have these three guys, Dennis Hecker, who is my brother, Freddie Jex, and Dover Lightburn. Dover? These were the three guys <laughs> yeah. who really, really made my football <laughs> career. Yeah, yeah. We played ball seven days a week. Yeah, and uh, during primary school, I always came off the bench. Because we had great players and whole yes, redeemers. Yes. But when I started SJC, Dennis Hecker sat me down and he said, Johnny, you can be the greatest defense we have, but you have to believe in yourself. Yeah. Self-confidence is what is killing you. And from that day on, my game just changed. I never thought again that nobody was better than me. Yeah. I knew they were, but I never admitted it or, yeah. you know, gave up anything like that to it, you know? Just like a game up. Yeah. yeah. And then um, I started playing my, my first junior season in 1968 in MCC. Um, Independence for your ball, which was the junior team junior to Mugger and Mole, their and senior Moore, independence. Yeah, Moore, that's the team they talk about. He started. The guy of the yeah. senior independence, Papi Cox, who died, was our coach. Yes, Papi Cox. You know? Yes, man. Legend. And um, we won that first season. Mm -hmm. So I actually played an MCC from 1968 and played my last game 1984 with some guys who were 10 years my junior. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I never won that elusive. City Championship, which I always wanted. Twice I played for it, once with White Label and once with Fort George. Yeah. And both times I was beaten by Berger 404 yeah, yeah, and then yeah. by Bellikin, by Bellikin, which was our offspring of Berger 404. Yeah. <laughs> I had to go all the way to PG in 83 to win a championship with Terence Genius and that crew. And I won, I won another one in 1981 in Los Angeles with Neutron. With Neutron, the team, I remember Neutron very well. Neutron was a team that went 36 and 0. Yeah, yeah. Three championships in one year. Talk about the players that was on Neutron. Yourself. Neutron, we had myself. We had Charlie Cook. Yeah. We had Harold Goff. Um, his, his nickname was Ohos and he played on the original Berger 404. Yeah, where is that picture? Where is that picture of Berger 404 with that, that Neutron team? Yeah. Let me see. Yeah, there Neutron, is. there we yeah. go. This is yeah. the original Neutron team. We I remember that team very well being in LA. We, yeah. were, we, we, we uh, had a player coach by the name of Kader Turton. Yes, who man. Who was a star in Belize. Mike, you got to bring game. Kader in here, you know. I know, I will. You got to bring Kader in yeah. here. Um, Makisa keep... Um, Telling me, man, you got to you interview yeah, Kader, man. man. Uh, he was he was one of my um, heroes when I was a kid that I used to watch Independence. Yeah, yeah. yeah just his name. How many Belizeans' name is Anton? Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the great yeah, Kader, man. legendary Kader. Big shout out to the legendary Kader. You got your boy in here. Just yeah. let me talk. He's big about you. We hope to see you in here one day soon. Makise, pay attention. <laughs> this picture is um BC. Mal the great Malcolm Hemans, a Hall of Famer, brought us out on his team. Mandingo Barnett, Gas McField, <laughs> Ripper Cowie, I mean a lot of great guys, Oliver oh. Estelle, played oh. on this team with us. Carter Rye, because mostly this, this, uh, we used to hang out at um, Plaza. Yes, the Plaza. You know, yeah, and hang man. at Cowie's yard. Yeah, so yeah. that's how we, but we actually started out a year before as Amateur Sporting Club. Mm -hmm. All of us had just, all of us had just graduated from high school, yes. and we came. Um, Gillian, that used to play for BC, brought us out together in our first year at senior. Yes. yes. You know, yes. Yes. and that's how we started out in the senior division, and that's when I gave Mandingo his name because yes. I'm the man who gave that's him his name. <laughs> Belizean sports history for you right here. Johnny Lindo was the man that named Earl Bye. Barnett. They give him the nickname of Mandingo. Yeah. And it was a man that to me that was man that was a could one of the players that could shoot. The man that used to make them goal pose was rock bridging. Man, we and played Nico a game. was a serious kicker. I mean, he's like <laughs> we played a game against Toyota Cruisers, who was a powerhouse. I mean, powerhouse at that time. And as soon as the whistle blew and he kicked off the ball. Mandingo took a shot from half a field and it was one to nothing in the AFC, believe yes, it or not. Sir. Yes sir. That guy had a yes, cannon, man. I'm Dig telling up the you, legendary you know? Earl Mandingo Barnett. Legend yeah. that is in Belizean football.
Yeah. Yeah, darling. Now move right on, bro. This picture, um, yes. This picture is a. Uh, in 1984, Belize was admitted to CONCACAF as a member and the president of CONCACAF visited Belize and he picked an Al City team to play against Sugar Boys from Corozal for his benefit, you know? Yes. Here we have Koro Osha, mm -hmm. we have myself, Albert Catus, Goatman, wow. Marish Jones. Known wow. legends of Belizean football. This is another um, legendary owner Sir Andy, Sir the Andy happy home builder. Happy home builders. The Belize, the, the promoted the Belizean basketball team, but before that he promoted football. Team. Football, yeah, he yeah, was in the football, football before basketball. basketball. Basketball, yes. Yeah. History for you there, Belize. This is a picture of the Al uh, City team right here. Wow. We have the Greek who just returned to Lopin, the league. Chris, Frank Sharp, for the Ben. Pops. We got Miniman, Wayne Reynolds, myself, Chana, Goatman, Paco Lewis. Yes, man. We'll you have the great Orino Rio, <laughs> yeah. Goatman, we really love this. <laughs> Albert Catus, yeah. Coro Osha, Steve Gill, Marish Jones, we got uh, Rushford, Tim, yes, Rushford. Planting, yes. and Dwight Catus. This was a great city team, wow. too. Legendary Belizean football team, right here, please. Belize yeah. football sports history, right here. Wow. This is a picture of the uh, the first white label because you had two white label teams. We yes. played for the first one. First white label. Yeah, first white yeah, label. This was what year you think around John? This was 1975 76 season. 76. Berger yes. 404 won that season and yeah. they beat us in the finals. First white label. Marge Jones yeah. was not on here yet. No, they don't. They played for the second the white second label. The second white label was the yeah. cut of the. Legendary football goalkeeper Rupert Calete Anderson was he playing with He was team? he was playing for Landy for them. For Landy for them. Our goalkeeper was yeah. Roberto Alvarez. Roberto Alvarez, Alvarez. Alvarez. yes man. Yeah, that's yeah. What, he was also my keeper at SJC, you yeah, know. Man. Because the last year at SJC seventy two, I captain a SJC team which won the season undefeated and not even one goal scored against us for the entire season. Wow. Yeah, that was a heavyweight team, yeah, man. Yeah, you, 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 you played high time. school football, SJC, yeah. St. John's College. Yeah, we beat te we be yeah. be technical in the finals. In the final, awesome, man. You, th yeah. you know, when you hear SJC, you thought that it was only basketball, right? Yeah, they just used it to really. use basketball. Yeah. But SJC, Belize, was also a powerhouse in Belize exactly. and football, soccer. Exactly. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. Here I have um, a picture of your friend, Charo. <laughs> yes, sir. In the gold. <laughs> Richard Ramirez. This is when he buy, he was in the Pasta, goalkeeper pay for, attention. For, for independence. I didn't know that you were a goalkeeper, my brethren. Playing against um, <laughs> police right here. Yeah, Richard Charo Ramirez, yeah. legendary Belizean jockey, was also a, a Belizean player. soccer player, football player, yeah. but, but the goalkeeper. Here he is in this epic photograph, brought in by Johnny Linda, where we, it is rare, it's a rare photo of Richard Ramirez yeah. as the goalkeeper, brother. Thanks for this. Um, I don't have, I didn't score a lot of goals in my career because I was a defense. But yeah. this is one of the few goals that I scored at yeah. MCC against yeah. the British yeah. Army. You were the first athlete that walk up in here and to actually show me a picture of them scoring their goal. Definitely <laughs> <laughs> didn't miss nothing. You documented everything and you kept these photographs, brother. That is archiving. Yeah. You know, look at that. The great John Lindo right here. Legendary great John Lindo scoring a goal. What team were you playing on here? This was BC. BC. Yeah. Wow, BC what, that has an awesome football player by the name of Vernon. Uh, Angus Vernon. Angus Vernon, Angus he was Landiver. He was Landiver. Mr. Bob. BC was Chico, Chico Ellis. Chico Ellis. I'm glad that you mentioned yeah, that because Chico Chico Ellis, nobody man. ever talks about Chico. Yeah. And this guy Lindo. was super bad. Yes. Man. I mean super bad. Talk you know? about the brother, man. Chico yeah. Ellis. Because I heard so many about him. He was one of the guys know? who could throw himself in the air and kick a ball whilst in the air and all that and score. He was really, really good, man. Yeah. And you know, sometimes I say, damn, nobody mentioned these guys, but I have to remember, there's yes. not a lot of people who, from that time, were yes, still around. Man. You know yes, what I mean? Man. Yeah, man. Chico yeah. is mentioned a lot on Belizean Legends. I have a classic right. photo that Ray Davis sent me in terms of Chico Ellis in the middle and the Team BEC. Yeah, man. That yeah. Team, this yeah. very, the very, yeah. very BEC team, man. He had a, he, we have another guy who lives in LA, 
by the name of Eldridge Latchman. Eldridge Latchman. Man, man he yeah. was a superstar <laughs> too for BC, man. Yes, I man. meet him all the time, you know? Yeah, not a name for you there, Belize. Eldridge Latchman. Eldridge Legend Latchman. He used to be a, 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 a postman, a mailman that delivered mail in Belize. Yes, man, I remember him, man. So, Whenever he would score a goal in the MCC, yeah. they would say the postman, the postman. knocks because that was a movie that had just come out at the time. Right.